Well, hello and welcome to uh, this OMG fly tying edition. Uh, today I'm going to um, tie a very simple fly. It's used for trout, bass, walleye, pike, just about anything that swims. You can make it in a variety of sizes and it's just an all-around versatile fly and it's called the woolly bugger. You can make it in a yellow, in a black, green, like flashy chartreuse. You could use that for steelhead. You can make this just plain, unweighted. You can make it with a cone head. You can make it with a bead head. You can make it in purple and if you really want to you can throw on a big bead head and turn this into an egg sucking leech pattern. You can also add wire to it, put that onto the body and the purpose of the wire and the bead heads is to uh, get that fly to sink down into the water. So if you're using floating line, can't get down deep enough you can, uh, you can do that just to get your fly to, to reach a greater depth. Conversely, I prefer to not have them weighted and you can use a uh, sink tip line or an intermediate line. You can even tie on a split shot just to get that down. I tend to like the, uh, the natural style because when it is in the water it tends to, it looks a lot, the presentation is a lot better I find than if you have the weight at the, at the head of it and the fly kind of tends to go like this more. When you have it unweighted it, it really really tends to, to float in the water. Uh, if you have it with a lead wire it'll still do the same floating it just drops quicker so it doesn't necessarily have a really cool kind of flutter as it goes down. So today uh, I'm going to tie a uh, blonde bugger. I'm going to tie it on a number two Mustad hook, streamer hook. And I just happen to, I like this hook, it's pretty sturdy, it's a nice hook to use, it's affordable, uh, and you can usually find it just about everywhere you can buy tackle. Thread for this, it's uh, I have a 6-0 thread. I'm using white, doesn't really matter, you could use tan to match the the the, the color of the intended fly. You can use brown, you can use black. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to use whatever color you want because most of the thread wraps are hidden. I, I'll use the white on this one simply because, well, to be honest, it happens to be the thread I have handy. I've got a uh, portable vise here so I'll just uh, hang on to it. I'll put some thread down here just to get a bit of a base going. Now my understanding is is that this fly originated in Pennsylvania in the early to mid 1900s I do believe and the pattern was intended to be uh, like a helmogranite type pattern and now it can be used really for any type of bug that's in the water crayfish you can use it as a uh, bait fish a wounded bait fish it, a leech you know it's it's just it seems to cover everything and the colors, the color selection, the color options, it's just limitless. You can do black and white, you can do red, orange, whatever uh, happens to to be uh, of interest to you or to the fish. So we've got our thread base down. Now I'm just going to build the uh, the tail for it. I tend to uh, maybe it's just uh, some marabou here. It's uh, strung marabou. You can use chickaboo, you can use uh, some select single uh, maraboos. Uh, I just, I don't think you need to go over really fussy and fancy with this fly. So I'm just going to keep all the materials simple, the tying pretty simple. And I'm just going to get this so that the tail is about the same length as what the hook is. And I'm just going to tie that in. Chase it down here a little bit 
might be a little bit long. It doesn't matter if the tail's too long, it just gets more leachy that way. Another thing you can do too, if you don't happen to have any um, any materials for tying it on the bottom, the body, sorry, um, you can just wrap, keep wrapping this feather around and use that as the body. I have some chenille here, which I'll use instead. I just find the chenille, uh, I, can, I can wrap the full length without having to really worry about a whole lot of uh, fussing around of getting another piece of marabou stem in there. Another thing that you can do just to dress this flap a little bit more is add some uh, crystal flash to it. Uh, I'm just having something that is similar in color to uh, to what I have. It's just going to be a little a little accent. Tie that on there. I'm just going to uh, have two strands, which is more than enough. I'll just tie that on to the one side. Move that down a little bit. Gather this. Get down the other side. Trim off any excess that I don't want. And there's your tail. So next we will build the uh, the body. I have some uh, saddle hackle here, same color, it's in the tan. You can use schlappen if you want. It depends on how bulky you want the profile of your fly to be. I'm just using this because uh, I, I, it's the, sort of the texture that I'm looking for. And again, there's to me there's no right or wrong as to how you set the uh, set the, the feather up onto the body. Now I've tied that in. Now I'm going to come in with the chenille. I'll tie in my chenille so that I can get the body started on it. Sometimes when you tie this in, it does get a little bit of a bump down at the back, but it's really not that big a deal. And same with having thread. You could the amount of thread you put on here. I think is, it doesn't matter because it all gets covered up. So I'm just going to uh, bring the chenille down, shank the hook. I'm just going to turn it over and make sure that uh, my loops are touching as I go. Keep some tension on it so that uh, it doesn't unravel. Nothing worse than you get down to the end of it and your fly suddenly decides to come apart on you. Not the end of the world because you can always just go back and tighten it all up again. So I'm just going to secure that in here. And then I'm going to take my hackle and some people prefer to have it facing one way or the other. There is sort of a, a natural arc to the, to the hackle. I find it doesn't matter. Once it's in the water and it starts doing its thing, it, uh, it'll, it'll just take care of itself. The only thing I try to do is keep the fibers out from kind of tying into itself. And when I get up to the head, I just do a bunch of loops. If some of the more webby stuff gets in, that's fine. I prefer to have a bit of a bulky top to my fly. I just find that it uh, it gives a better profile to it. I'm not sure if you can hear right now. We're having a big thunderstorm. It's thundering in the background. But if you can hear that, I do apologize. So now I'm just going to tidy the head up. Just bring all that material back. Just make sure you don't cover up the eye of your hook when you're doing that. And then we'll just whip finish. I don't, just probably four or five turns is good. If you have any head cement, put it on. I'll take some, I'll take this uh, later and I'll stick the head cement on it. And uh, there you have it, the blonde bugger. This one I find is a, is a good uh, crayfish pattern, and uh, the bass around here just love it. So what I'll uh, end up doing is I will take this here fly, or maybe it's friend or it's other friend, down to the local pond 
or the river, or whatever waterway I happen to uh, be able to get at for the day, and try it out and uh, see how we do. I, uh, I've fished with these flies many, many times, and I do guarantee that they will catch fish. If uh, you'd like some of these flies, you can just let me know. That'd be uh, fine, and we'll see what we can do for you. Um, in closing, uh, yeah, if you want to leave some comments, please feel free to do so. They're greatly appreciated, and, uh, you know, if there's some tips or techniques or whatever you can think of that would help me uh, improve my fly tying skills, uh, they, that is definitely appreciated. And if uh, you like, give me a thumbs up. And if you wish to, please feel free to subscribe. And uh, once again, thank you from this uh, OMG Fishing.